hello everyone out there in YouTube. This is, this is Hawk Plane, and this is the second episode of The Hawk's Nest, a weekly series where I'm going to be doing a little bit of discussion, a little commentary on some things going on in geeky news, geeky media, and, and sort of give my opinion and reactions to that kind of thing. Last week I did, you know, so whether or not a Superman should be going to a badass, you know, in the light of uh, Batman v Superman. And uh, this week, for the first time, I'm going to do a video that has nothing to do with Superman. Granted, it's not an amazing achievement because this is my third video on the channel, but still, uh, it's going to be instead of going to be about the issue of uh, the anime manga the Ghost in the Shell and some recent casting news about it uh, that's really come to the forefront. Actually, I think the casting came out sometime last year, but it's really kind of picked up traction now. And uh, that's the casting of Scarlett Johansson as Motoko Kusanagi, the main character in, in the live action remake of Ghost in the Shell. And um, I kind of, I'm of two minds on this, you know? Uh, I, well, I'm mostly on one mind, but I kind of understand both perspectives on, on this whole issue. Uh, on one side, I get it from Hollywood perspective. They need a big name actor. They need someone to put bandies in their seats, you know? They need someone to make sure that the producer's money isn't being wasted because there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of money being invested in this film, and it's not the best known franchise, so you do need someone to provide a little bit of extra security in that sense. And uh, you need someone to make sure the film gets made, because a lot of times these films don't even get made without a star attached to it. So on that, on that standpoint, it makes sense. And I, that, that's kind of where I leaned to initially, you know? Because, and uh, on top of that, uh, the issue of the cultural change wasn't, you know, that wasn't as big a deal for me um, at the time, because I want, well, because if you look at it uh, from other in, from other properties, things like in Japan, if you don't know it, they had in the seventies a Spider-Man manga. You know, in the Spider-Man manga, he wasn't Peter Parker, he wasn't you know a white kid in in, in suburban uh, Queens. He was some. He was a Japanese kid. He was a Japanese high school student. I don't remember his name right now, but yeah, all the characters. You know, this inspired by manga were Japanese, and funnily enough, like Aunt May, I think, was still, still named Aunt May, M E I. Oh, well. <laughs> but, but, but my point is, um, they they had to change, they they had to adapt the characters to fit the audience, you know, to that they want to appeal to. And I think the same thing happened a few years ago when they had uh, India. Uh, India had its own version of Spider Man, its own official version of Spider Man. I think it wasn't Peter Parker; it was an Indian kid. I don't, I don't say I, I understand. I, I approve this, but I understand the appeal of uh, of changing a character to to be Caucasian. But then I kind of thought about it a little bit. And first of all, a there's a few things. That, well, there, there's a few things wrong with this. A first of all, not all not even one in America is white. You know, it's it's something to be in India or Japan, where it's ninety you know ninety eight ninety nine percent all Japanese or all Indian. But there's a lot of different cultures in here. It's not one, America's not just one culture. So, a lot, lot, there, there, so it doesn't have to necessarily be white. You know, and another thing is um, the whole cultural um, adaptation argument kind of loses a little bit of steam when you consider the, uh, uh, the, the growing importance of the global box office. You know, it's not just the domestic box office up here that, that people care about anymore. It is, you know, you, it is how much it makes on a worldwide scale, and a lot more films. To Hollywood's credit, a lot more films are trying to appeal to, you know, to the Asian market, to the, uh, to the European markets, and so on and so forth. Having, uh, you know, I think films like Iron Man three had entire sequences filmed just for China, and a lot of uh, Transformers and Euro Station was filmed in China with Chinese stars. So, so uh, yes, so having that, that global, you know, bigger global box office perspective, it's something that. It, it, you can't really rely on that. On um, oh, you need to cast someone white, or you need to cast someone who's only famous, you know, who only Americans know. You know, you can, and I think you're you, these days more than maybe not completely, but more than before, you can get away with casting, uh, you know, someone who, who's only a big star in Japan or or, or China or whatever in the film. And then there's a whole cultural thing here. Uh, maybe it's because I'm Asian, but. Um, the whole taking of, of white actors and making them Asian Asian characters that that just rubs me the wrong way. I mean, it's not just oh they're not being true to the source material or something like that, which I think plays some some you know plays some part of it. But uh, 
it, it, there's 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 kind of an ugly history behind that, you know. It's and it's it's not completely gone away. I mean, when you hear about like they're doing some kind of CGI test on uh, on actors in Ghost in the Shell, I, I think that the rumor was that it was they were doing the test on on uh, on Scarlett Johansson herself, but no, they sent it straight. There. No, it's just like they did a test on like a random extra or something like that. And doing a test to make Caucasian actors with CGI look more Asian. That's that is that's Mickey Rooney with new technology. Okay, they didn't go through with it, but just the idea that even thought it was something that was worth even looking into is just and so so there, so there is kind of a history here that's not com that's not completely gone. And and uh, as, as someone as someone who's Asian, I definitely have have an, have an interest in that. I certainly have a sort of something of a stake in that. I'm gonna get in my soapbox here. Uh, you can't really see me standing on anything, but I'm saying my soapbox right now. And uh, I'm gonna get a little political. It's not something I usually do with the channel. In fact, I'm never gonna do this again with this channel. I promise you that. But uh, the whole issue of again, I move on to the ugly history and all of that. And but but there's also a little bit more to it in in that. Uh, there's not that much, you know, we don't have a whole lot of positive portrayals of Asians on television, or television or film. You don't have, have like a lot of like, really charismatic Asian lead, Asian leads, you know, being badass, being cool. And it's, again, grand. I know, give you this, we have much more, we have more than we used to. We have, it's gotten better. It definitely has. But uh, at the same time, we're still a little far behind in that, in that regard. And to have this kind of thing, you know, this kind of potentially you know, star making, Big role would would be who can may really be a big boost to a lot of Asian American Asian Americans and cultural representation. To have that go to a white actor is kind of a it's kind of a missed opportunity, you know. It's like it's 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 a bit of it's a bit of a waste to me, I, I, I think. And uh, you know, you could have had this big moment for Asian Americans and for Asians across the world to have like okay, be this big action star, big you know, headlining this big movie and. Giving it to someone like Scarlett Johansson, who kind of, let's be honest, she doesn't really need the extra exposure. You know, she's already got Avengers. She's already got all, you know, a lot of other, other you, know, you know, a lot of other credits to her name. It's, it's not like if she's, you know, she's not like she's starving for roles if she doesn't get, if, she, if she doesn't play Kusanaki in this, you know. But it feels like, you know, it's a, it's a wasted opportunity for an Asian actor and for Asian representation. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a shame to me. That's what I think, you know. So I think that that's where I stand on the issue. And, um, if you disagree, I totally understand. Like I said, I, I see both sides here. And whether you agree or disagree, you want to talk about it in the comments below, please talk about it in the comments. And um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Please, please subscribe. That number over there is really tiny. So you got to feed that the, that red box or, or whatever it is. I'm, I'm not even sure on YouTube right now. So I'm gonna, you know, YouTube changes so often. And uh, please subscribe, please like, please do whatever you want with a comment, all of that great stuff you YouTubers do, and I will see you next.